Today we're working on the first movement from Six Miniatures for Viola and Piano by Violet Archer from the Solos for the Young Violist by Barbara Barber. Welcome back. Welcome to the studio. My name is Cassie and I'm a professional violist and teaching artist. So today we're going to work on just the first movement of this multi-movement work. They are meant to be performed one after the other, but because we're doing a tutorial and a slow and a fast playthrough, I broke it up by movement. If you're interested in my fingerings and bowings and suggestions, check out Patreon below. I post all of my music there. So let's get started on this movement. So while the notes are not tricky, there may be a new scale for you. And we're exploring modes in this piece. And a mode just means a different type of scale. So we're going to explore this mode first. This is the Dorian mode. And it's listed right at the top of the paper. So we're just going to play through that scale or that mode one time through. One note per bow. scales, a scale is just a, uh, an order of notes. So basically this scale, the Dorian scale, is kind of like a D major scale, but it's got a lowered third note. So instead of F sharp, we have F natural and a lowered seventh note. So instead of C sharp, we have C natural. And it kind of sounds like a little bit medieval. So we're exploring that mode in this piece. So let's get into the piece. At the very beginning, we've got two measures of rest. So I'm obviously not going to count those. We're going to start in the third measure. And I want to be in the middle of the bow. Now I've got a few bowings here that are a little bit tricky, so let's explore those slowly. So I'm going to use to the tip of my bow for that first note, back to the middle on this slur, then stay in the middle. So it's only almost like a zigzag that I've made with my bow. Let's try that one more time. So it's to the tip, back to the middle, stay at the middle. on this last A. So let's do those two measures again a little closer to tempo. One, two, middle bow, go. Stay in the middle. Tip. Now the next two measures are the same bowings but different notes and we're starting on an up bow. So let's try that. We'll be starting at the tip on that G and going to the middle. Staying in the upper half. I'm going to go to the tip on that slur and use a lot of bow on those last two eighth notes because we've got a crescendo to forte. And the very next measure has double stops, so it's going to be louder anyway because we're playing double stops, but we want to help create that crescendo by using more bow. So let's try that first line, no stops. One, two, mid bow, go. Stay in the middle. those last two notes really does help create that crescendo. So next measure, measure seven, we've got double stops. If you've never done a double stop before, basically what I'm going to do is distribute the same amount of arm weight onto two strings. So instead of just using a forte arm weight on the A string, I'm going to distribute that evenly onto the D string. I'm not pressing any harder. That's a really common misconception about double stops. You don't need to press on the bow any harder. You don't need to sink in any harder. It's just the same amount of arm weight on two strings. Lift your elbow to go to the G and D. Drop your elbow back to A and D. And that brings us to the measure before A, measure 10. So you want to make sure that those last two eighth notes that you have of double stops don't get you caught too high in the bow, because otherwise you're not going to have enough bow to do that really long E. So I'm going to start in two measures before rehearsal A in those A and D double stops. And I've planned it, so I'm all the way at the frog. So I did another one of those zigzaggy bowings. So why don't you try that with me? We're going to be in the middle of the start. And then I'm going to stay at the frog for this E. So I have the full bow to use. Next note's tied and then slurred to D. So the third note of measure A is an up bow. It's a really tricky bowing note. So we've got a long E, still down, up. 
and I'm gonna stay at the tip for those two notes. Then I'm gonna use that next slur to bring me closer to the middle of the bow. Back to the tip. to the frog on that crescendo that we just had in measure 16. So we got that last up bow should bring you to at least the lower half if not the frog. So we can play forte for those next eighth notes. Reversal B. Stay in the middle of your bow because we've got a subido piano in that next measure. So I want to make sure that when I start at A, at B, get too close to the frog because doing subido piano there is almost impossible. It's really, really difficult. So stay in the middle of the bow at the end of that measure of B. Less arm weight and you can push out towards the fingerboard a little bit to make the sound a little bit less. Now full bow, lower half. your three here from the G to the D. Also make sure that your finger is set before your bow moves. So your finger, your left hand should always precede the bow. Um, if you don't do that, this is what happens. We get an added note in there. So you're going to have an open A, which is not what we want. So left hand always precedes the bow. So now that we've walked through this piece, it's kind of short. Um, the tempo that is requested in the piece is 120, but we're going to do a slow playthrough first. So I'm setting my metronome at 98. And that's my quarter note. And I'll count to four once and then we'll begin. One, two, ready, go. Through. I set my metronome to 120 and I'll count to four once and we'll begin. Middle bow, one, two, ready, go. piece in the coming weeks so check back on the channel for those if there's anything that I didn't cover that you're still wondering about wondering about please post those in the comments below I really enjoy trying to help from afar as always thank you so much for joining me and happy practicing